Hey you guys, it's Ken from Flow Tricks. It's good to see you all. I know you haven't seen me, unless you're on Patreon, you saw me earlier in the week, but my videos have been going down just a little bit because I have been swamped with gigs. Now gigs is awesome, um, but at the same time, like sometimes I'm like, I flew out and I just came back last night and I'm flying out again tomorrow for another show. I should be back on Monday and then I have one more flight and Friday, but somewhere in between I'll, I make videos. Someday I would like to use Flow Tricks and make, just focus on doing videos full time, but gigs usually pay my bills right now for the most part so I always gotta always gotta jump on those before I forget don't forget at the end of the month we are giving away a uh, four capsule nunchuck from flow toys now I just use these uh, you can use these professionally you can use them just for flow you can use them for fun they're rechargeable you can pull them out use them as night lights if you want to and we're giving it away to one lucky eight dollar or more patreon donor all you have to do is go to patreon.com slash flow tricks and I have it kind of below, <laughs> patreon.com slash flow tricks and make any kind of donation, $8 or more, and you're automatically included. Now, mostly the donations go just to help flow tricks because I'm building the mobile app, building the website, and I want to get more instructors and I want to get more videos out. It's just a matter of time uh, and commitment as to how much I can put in. Anyways, today is a little bit different. I don't have time to edit. I'm really just pushing this out and then I got to go back to working and getting ready for this for tomorrow's show. Uh, but uh, I've asked on Patreon what they wanted to learn. And so I, I'm gonna go over some of the answers and we're gonna do a little bit of teaching today. So the first question is, uh, they wanted to know about body tracers. I know that types of tricks work for poi. Are they adaptable for nunchucks? So you may or may not know what body tracers are. And it's, there's a lot of different types of tracings that you can do. Basically, with poi and nunchucks, and again, excuse the mess, I'm just kind of flying by the seat of my pants right now. Basically, most things you can do with chucks, you can also do with poi and vice versa. I mean, there's gonna be a couple of things that are different, but because they can both bend and flex, just keep in mind, because chucks are shorter than poi, now poi is a long rope with the ball at it, uh, because chucks are, have shorter ropes, you're gonna to have to be a lot tighter with it. Now, when you're wondering about like, I'm, I'm assuming you're probably talking about this type of tracing and stuff like this. Um, so I'm gonna go over a very simple uh, explanation. We'll just go over one of them here and hopefully this will help. The prerequisite is knowing the three beat weave. Now the three beat weave, I'm gonna assume you already know how to do this, but you're basically, the reason why it's called a three beat weave is because if I were to put my hand down, you're making three circles before it repeats. There's a circle above, that's a cross. There's a circle below, and then there's a circle over here. So when your hands are moving, if you watch my right hand, above, below, over, above, below, over, above, below, over. This gives you time as you spin it above and below that actually gives you time. And that's what's gonna help you do this motion. It's gonna be the exact same thing, above, below, and over, except we're gonna create space. So now the above is gonna slide through the arm and then the below is gonna slide through the arm. So the, the first thing you can practice is just hold your hand out straight and just practice how the three beat weave feels with one arm extended and not moving. It's the exact same thing as this, except for we're not using this nunchuck. So above, below, over. The next thing we're gonna do is you're gonna hold it above and you're gonna slide it all the way back to your shoulder without moving your arm. So go like this, so above, slide it down. Now the chuck is going downward like this. So it's always facing downward. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna swing it under our armpit. So here, swing. And what you're gonna try to do is try to get the chuck to go straight up from under your armpit and then slide it back forward. So slowly it's gonna be here, pull. It's gonna rotate all the way around until it's almost touching the tricep. It's almost like an up stall that's, that's going backwards. So it's gonna feel a little bit odd and it doesn't have to be perfect, but I want you to kind of get this feel. Above, pull, do a full rotation. So as you can see, it's pointing down and then it's pointing up as my arm is underneath my armpit and then push it through. So here, here, forward. So it's, again, it's the same thing, above, below, on the other side, above, below, on the other side, except for now it's gonna be above slide, below slide, on the other side, above slide, below slide, on the other side. So basically all we're doing is we're taking the circle above and below and we're lengthening it and we're lengthening it. Now this also helps if you know how to kind of float it around. But I think that would be a good start. Once you can do it that way, then hold it with the chuck in your hand and try it again, above, below, over. Try not to get the chuck in your hand um, because sometimes your chuck will get in the way so you might have to hold it with two hands, but just kind of get the feel and see 
if you can just kind of feel it with the chuck in your hand. And then the very last part of this is doing it with through a three beat. Now what's going to happen is you obviously need a little bit more time to get through it, but this just kind of does a figure eight while I'm doing the trace. So see, it just keeps going and back and going and back and going and back. You can do it with the other arm too. Just do the exact same thing. I'll just I'll just kind of show you to show you that it works. So if I go over here, I can also do it with both arms. Um, but I'm not going to go into that details right now. I just want you to get used to that. Above, blow, over, and then lengthen, lengthen, and over. So you're basically doing the same thing. You're making circles, but you're just sliding them about. There's so many different kinds of body tracers you can do. Um, I don't delve into them too much because I'm not, I'm not the super doubles guy. But that definitely, hopefully that helps you out. Let me see what else we have here. I don't know what a body tracer is, but I'm willing to try. I'd like to work throws and tosses. Whatever you do, I enjoy and grow my skills. Thank you. All right, yeah, yeah, sure. Let's go ahead and uh, let's work on a couple. We're gonna add a throw into the mix now. Now, I'm gonna assume that we're doing doubles. Sounds like we're doing doubles today. Um, one of the most simple throws goes off of a three beat. You may or may not know about this one already, but I just find that this is probably one of the best ones to do because it just, it's there. Like, you're already in the middle of making your, your circles, so this just kind of makes it a lot easier to catch. So the way this works is, we're doing the three beat, and I'm doing it to the side, okay? The prerequisite is knowing the three beat. And then as we turn to the side, uh, facing the camera, we're in something called crank position. Now crank position just basically means the chucks are spinning, but one hand is slightly in front of the other so they don't crash. Otherwise, they could crash into each other, boom. You don't want them to crash into each other, you want one hand to be slightly ahead of the other so they can intersect in the center without actually hitting. Now what's gonna happen is the hand that's in the back, is right now it's my left hand, as it starts swooping below, we're gonna reach underneath and really extend underneath. So this is kind of kind of get a little bit longer as the chuck hits from nine o'clock and swings down to six o'clock. You don't need to necessarily have a chuck in your hand to first feel this out, but basically we're gonna kind of elongate the circle, and then we're gonna get underneath our arm like this. Now the most important thing is before you let go, you gotta give it a slight tug backwards. And the reason for that is because if you don't, it's gonna keep flying that way. But if you give it a very slight tug backwards, it's gonna allow itself to return back to you. Here we go. So here, get underneath. Once it gets past to the other side of your arm, you're gonna flick it over and you're gonna see if you can catch it. Next, when you can do it, do it with the chucks in your hand, like this. Get underneath and catch. Then, see if you can get both of them to be spinning at the same time and do the same thing. Now here's the thing, if your angle's a little bit off, uh, it may crash into the other chuck. For instance, um, if my angle is, is kind of, let's see, if I throw my chuck and it's spinning diagonally like this, it'll intercept and hit the chuck. So make sure when you're spinning it that it's going very, the chuck is gonna be facing very horizontally like this. And in that way, it will never hit. It's gonna be almost like a line. So it's almost like when you throw it under your arm, you're creating a line and you don't want the chuck to pass this line. And usually the line is between here to here. You don't want it to get too much closer. And you're gonna do the same thing. Reach under, pull, and catch. Oops. So reach under, pull, and catch. You can do it with the uh, other arm as well. All you have to do is a number three bounce. Boop, like that. So. If we're doing it and we want to try the right hand, just number three bounce, and then it'll dip dive, and you can fling it across to the other side, just like that. So I hope that helps. Um, that's just going to be a simple throw. I will give you a singles throw as well that I really enjoy doing that I haven't really taught very often. This is called the helicopter aerial. And basically, it's over the shoulder passes, whoosh, whoosh, right? But this time, as your hand comes up, what's basically happening right now is we're touching the hip, we're pulling up to catch. Touching the hip, pulling up to catch. But this time, our hand is going to kind of spin diagonally out and up, and it's going to flick it up this direction. So we're here. You see my hand? It's pulling this direction, so it's going diagonally. And then what's going to happen is it's going to flick out like this. Whoosh! And that's going to cause it. Now this can cause a very high, a very high throw. So whoosh, catch here, catch. So again, it's it, what we're trying to do is we're trying to create. While our hand is lifting, we're kind of trying to create it horizontal at the same time. So it's kind of like a horizontal throw, like kind of like if we're doing wrist rolls and we're almost doing a horizontal throw, like so. Except we're giving it an upward lift, 
Otherwise, it's not going to go anywhere, but at the level that we're throwing it, and it's going to fall down. So here, lift, throw, catch. Now, the catch is, is kind of challenging, but basically, as it passes your face, snatch it out. So the moment that the chuck passes the face is the time that you can reach over and grab it. This also means you don't want to spin it too fast, because the faster the rotation is, the faster your hand's going to move, have to move to catch it. So I hope, uh, I hope that, that helps. That's, that's two throws. I'm coming back. Let's see if there's any more questions here. Do, do, do. All right. Next question says, thanks for the video. This is sweet. Some beginner level body tracers <laughs> to build confidence. Oh yeah, okay. I guess it ended. There's a, quite a bit of talking about body tracers and whatnot. But I mean, I don't delve too deeply into body tracers, but I can say this. Anytime you want to create a really nice visual effect with your nunchucks, see if you can take a figure eight, figure eight or a reverse figure eight, and see if you can pull it through parts of your body. For instance, if I'm doing, sorry, I have these really big shirt, this really gigantic shirt. If I'm doing like a hip reel like this, right? Uh, there are elements that I can do, even as I raise and lower my hands, to make it more dramatic than if it was just sitting at my hip. And the same with the other side. So what you're trying to do basically is you're trying to take circles and turn them, elongate them into ovals and draw lines across. So keep that in mind with body tracers because there's really a lot of different motions that you can do, but uh, it's gonna be off explorations. And most of them you can do from a figure eight. So see so if you can do a figure eight, so if you can hold your hand out for instance and slide, you know, we've already done that one. But there's other ones too, like straight down that way. That may be maybe a little bit too high so here whoosh and all i'm doing here is i'm just doing a hip reel but the moment it gets to my to my backside i'm lifting my hand up as high as it can go and then i'm pushing straight down and that will allow it to create more of a line that happens so i mean as you can see you could probably go up in the same way like it goes up you might even be able to go up and across almost to make like a a little t section you know there's all different kinds of ways you can trace through your body. Um, try it with one nunchuck, see if that works, and then you can also try it with two. Hey, I hope this helps. I know, my apologies, not doing much editing right now. This is very impromptu, but I just wanted to get something out to you guys because you know I really appreciate you all, and uh, um, I just gotta get back to this gig though and make sure I get everything under an order. So I hope you appreciate this, and I will talk to you all soon. Leave me a message if you need anything else.